Good morning. morning. Welcome to Bethesda. We're glad you're here. This is our Consecration Sunday where we're making our pledges and commitments at this time. And uh, we want to thank all of you that have already sent those pledges in. And given these times, we know it's challenging. But uh, if you can and you're able, we'll just ask you to place those in the boxes on the way out uh, since we're not taking up a formal offering during these times of worship. Highlight some of the announcements. Uh, Our youth, I think we're away at a play. Came back from Charlotte last night. Uh, Shoe boxes. Okay. Uh, how many we got? Probably 50 plus, something like that. If you still have some, place them down here. There's a few empty ones if you'd like to take one. But we are going to take them down to First Baptist Church tomorrow. Uh, that's our assigned time, so we need to do that. So thanks. Uh, call family. We had about 19 families we serviced yesterday. That's a joint project with us in Community Presbyterian Church. Uh, they provide a lot of food and some financial assistance. and We do that here every other Saturday. So thank you for the food that you're bringing and the support of that program. Uh, other announcements or concerns this morning? Yes, Mona. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mona. If you have prayer requests or concerns, please get them to us. We'll get them in the bulletin. We'll get them up on the website and all. And uh, there, there's many that are in need of prayer at this time. So. But at this time, I invite you, if you would, let's turn our hearts and our minds to God and let's worship the living Lord.
And now as you're able, would you please stand with me for our call to worship. Let's join together. Lord, thank you for the gifts you give. Lord, our time, talents, and treasures are a sacred trust from you. Lord, help us to use our resources in a way that honors you. Help us excel in the grace of giving. Help us become wise stewards of the opportunities you give us to use our gifts. Help us as channels of your love, kindness, and mercy to others. Help us welcome more grace into our lives, which have been blessed, so we will be a blessing to others. Let's sing together that great hymn, We Give Thee But Thine Own. Let's sing. Please be seated if you would. And now I invite you to turn to our forgiving God as we uh, pray together this prayer of confession. Let's pray. Loving God, we have wandered into wildernesses of our own making. We have strayed from the safety of your care, believing we can take care of ourselves. We lean on your teachings but follow the desires and whims of our hearts. Forgive us when we seek instant gratification for our desires, yet resist following your wisdom. We are impatient and want you to solve our problems. Help us turn from our way and lean on you for support. Lift our spirits, renew our hope, and soothe our souls. Amen. The promise of our God is that when we are forgiven, we are forgiven 100%, and our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. So this morning, receive that forgiveness into your spirits. Be those who forgive. Thanks be to God in Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. Peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And, and let's stand and extend it a little bit so some of those around you.
Amen. Please be seated if you would. First lesson is from First Chronicles where David publicly gives God all the recognition. Listen as I read the 29th chapter there. Then David blessed the Lord in the presence of all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our ancestor Israel, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, are the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in the heavens and on the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom. O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. Riches and honor come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might, and is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. And now, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. First New Testament lessons, one's familiar to most of us, is the widow's might, Luke 21. He looked up and saw rich people putting their gifts into the treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. He said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in all she had to live on. And then from the book of Acts, the 20th chapter, it's a, a message of grace. And now I commend you to God and to the message of His grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. I coveted no one's silver or gold or clothing. You know for yourselves that I work with my own hands to support myself and my companions. In all this I have given you an example that by such work we must support the weak, remembering the words of the Lord Jesus. For he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. 
This is the word of the Lord. A woman was out shopping in the mall trying to get all the gifts in before the day was over and she got a little fatigued and tired, thought she had to just take a rest. So she went over to one of the kiosks and bought a little bag of cookies and put it in her bag. Then she got in line to get a cup of coffee. So she got her coffee and her cookies. She went over and sat down at one of those tables in those crowded areas and she was sitting right across the table from another gentleman. So she sat down and she pulled out her magazine took her cup of coffee and started taking a few sips. The gentleman was over there reading his newspaper. Pretty soon, he reached over and took a cookie and started eating it. She thought, okay, so she reached over and took a cookie and started eating it. A few moments later, a few more sips of coffee. He was still reading his newspaper. He reached over and took another cookie. So she thought, hmm, And she took a cookie and ate it. She wasn't upset yet. A little longer, he reaches over there and takes another cookie. She thought, mmm. So she takes a cookie and eats it. Then they both realize there's one cookie left. A little while later, the gentleman reaches over, takes the one cookie, breaks it in two, gives her half, takes the other half and eats it. Then pretty soon he takes his newspaper, folds it up, smiles, and walks away. The lady was huffed. She was hot. She said, how am I going to tell my family about this experience at the mall? So she folded up her magazine, stuffed it down in her bag, and saw her bag of cookies. (laughs) It is more blessed to give than to receive? Really? Really? Giving was Jesus' way of living. From his lowly birth and poverty, his lonely death and agony, Jesus gave. He walked among the downtrodden, the diseased, the distressed, showing compassion and care and concern. Jesus gave inspiration to the weary, He gave joy to souls that were sad, hope to those who were in despair, peace to those that were grieving, and strength to the weak, and he he gave rest to the weary. Giving was Jesus' way of living. So the answer, is it more blessed to give than to receive, is yes, yes, when we are keenly aware of all we've been given and are being continually given, yes, yes. But how do we reach that conclusion? Giving in order to receive is not our motivation. Love is the foundation of our giving. Paul writes, if I give all of my possessions to the poor but have not love, I gain nothing. It's been said you can give without loving, but you can never truly love without giving. Paul wanted to be able to go on giving all of his life down to his last breath. He didn't ask for money or clothing. He didn't ask for a salary. He stitched tents for his support. Simply put, he experienced that it was more blessed to receive than to give. But he received. He received that conversion we all know of and became a giver. You know, once we've personally experienced receiving from the Lord, all those other things in our lives pale in comparison to the riches of God. Our thinking changes as we become aware that everything that I am, everything that I have, everything I hope to be comes from God. And then we become givers. We no longer need these stewardship sermons asking us to give to fund a budget. It's a paradox, though, isn't it, that we we tend to give Give only after we've received. Let me share with you how this thinking of receiving before we're giving crept into our culture. It began with a small china cup sitting on the counter of a butcher shop in England in the mid-1500s. On the cup were printed in capital letters the initial TIPS, T-I-P-S, the abbreviations for the words to ensure prompt service. The obvious message was that if you wanted 
to get ahead of those that were ahead of you in the line, you needed to put a little money in the cup. Begin by giving. Then you might get served. Now think about that. Think about tips. Remember when there was no tipping? Remember when it went 5%? Now it's what, 20%? And gratuity is added before you even get your meal? Before you receive service? Service, waiters, all taking orders, serving, filling glasses, bringing our checks. Now my daughters, who've all paid their dues at the restaurant serving, always have to remind their cheap father to at least give 20% or more. Would that apply to our giving? God isn't into percentages, like giving 20% of the sunshine, maybe 30% of the air, 40% of our daily bread, 50% forgiven. What about God's love? You see, God continually gives extravagantly, generously. The sun, the stars, the sky, the seas, the soil, the seasons that we enjoy day and night, blueberries, buttercups, all given for us to receive, to enjoy, and to share. Freely you have received, freely give. Folks, the enduring motivation to give is our response to God's gifts given. To give is to live, to receive, and to hold on. Who would choose that path when they know what God has given us? When we aren't giving, you see, we're missing out on receiving by not experiencing that gladness and joy that's promised to us. Oh, me. Think about it. Our giving is not based on what we've given. If there's no spreadsheet or tally on what we've given, we give without expecting anything in return or reward. Think about it. Parents and families give to their flesh and blood, and this bond is like no other. As great as this love bond can be, it pales in comparison to God's unconditional giving to us. So I'm asking you to join in Bethesda's giving with gratitude and gladness because God first loved us, motivated by love, Together we give our portion for the ministry and mission we do. By combining our individual gifts, we do so much more. Giving has that multiplying effect. And whatever we give, God blesses and, yes, multiplies it. I think if there's one mistake I've made here at Bethesda, and I've been consistent in it, is have not said enough about how much you give and do in this entire community. Give, the scriptures say, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken over. Think about that. A king everyone loved had decided to make a tour throughout his kingdom one day. Great preparations were made for his tour. They paved and cleaned up the roads, repaired the bridges, People got out their best and put it on to see the king coming. They were encouraged, of course, to give some expression of gratitude to the king, a small gift, a love gift, so to speak. Well, one poor widow who was living all alone in her cottage had no gift to give a king, nor did she have even suitable clothing for the occasion. She decided to just stay home in her little hut, and maybe she could peek out through the window and see that entourage going by. On that day, people gathered by the hundreds along the road. The widow looked out from her house, and she could see the multitudes. As the procession was coming, she heard the great noise, the shouting and cheering. But the poor widow just couldn't stay home. She put on her old black bonnet, picked up her bag, and ran out into the big crowd. She thought to herself, oh, he'll never see me. Just as the king's chariot approached, it stopped right in front of her. The king looked right through the crowd and looked right at her. The old woman thrust her hand into the bag and took out a copper coin, the only coin she had, and put it in the king's hand. The king smiled. My good woman, you can't afford to give all that gold to your king. Here, take it back. She cried, oh, king, don't poke fun at a poor old woman. I know that copper coin is not fit to give a king, but 
It's all I have. The king said, here, take it back. And when she took it back, it had turned to gold. The deeper we understand how freely God gives, the deeper our gratitude, the greater our motivation, the more freely we give. And today is not just about treasures, sharing a bag of cookies, or a copper coin, or even gold coins. It's all about who we are, who we've been blessed to be, and who we can give to. Bethesda is blessed with many who give generously to glorify God. So yes, we each can answer that question. It is more blessed to give than receive. But the only way you're going to know it, by giving. Let's pray. Loving God, to whom much is given, much is expected. And we know that you have not withheld any good gift from your people. So we come this morning thankful for the bounty we've received. And we do ask, O oh Lord, that you would help us to, to find that joy in being givers. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. We tell our entire time now for every Thanksgiving and intercession. Uh, we request from Mona, Chuck Dearborn, any of you know is in the hospital, is doing better. Uh, I talked to Nancy this morning, talked to Chuck a couple of times. Other people that we need to have in our prayers this day. Okay, once again, bow your heads and bow your hearts. Loving God. We come to give ourselves to you, a portion of who we are, our time and our talents and our treasures. First and foremost, may we know deep in our hearts that you're grateful that we're doing this, that you receive us, you welcome us, you accept whatever we offer, and that you will multiply. The bounty will be greater. And we trust and believe, O oh Lord, that you guide your church, Bethesda, here, to use these gifts wisely. So we take this opportunity Consecrate all that we are, all that we give to you, and give you thanks and praise for what you've given us. Oh Lord, we would be remiss if we came and prayed only for ourselves and our bounty and our stewardship. We are a nation in need, a nation in need of healing, a nation in need of peace. So we ask, oh Lord, this morning that you would continue to give us a charitable spirit towards those with whom we differ, to help us to have compassion those whom we are different, but help us to be reminded, O oh Lord, we are citizens of this nation, but first and foremost, citizens of your heavenly kingdom. And we thank you that you have called us with an everlasting love, and because you called us, you equipped us, and because you've equipped us, you will use us. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you would use us and have your way within us, within this body of Christ, to do your will and your way for the sake of your kingdom heaven and on earth. For this is our prayer which we make in the name of the Savior who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our Once again, if you're able, I'd invite you to stand using our affirmation of faith from 1 Peter there. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies, so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. To him belong the glory and the power forever and ever. I'm going to live so God can use me. Let's sing together.
So as you go this day, go and live, work, pray, and sing so God can use you and know that everything you do for the Lord is multiplied and has a bountiful effect. Go in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.